morning. How are you guys today? Sleepy? Awake? Good morning. I hope you guys are all doing well out there today. It's Tuesday, the 30th, last day of June, 2020. Crazy. So just enjoying my coffee with you all. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic morning. Uh, just gonna wait a few minutes before I dive in on the topic as you all join. Uh, this is live on Facebook and Instagram. For those of you on Facebook, I know that the feed cuts out in and out on your end. It does not cut out on my end. And when I repost it, it's fine. So if it keeps cutting out, you have a couple options. Number one, you can go back later. Uh, usually posts about 15 minutes after to my Facebook feed. Also goes to my YouTube page within a day or two. Or you can head over to Instagram at Dr. Pingle. Instagram, if your feed cuts out, guess what? I'm also on Facebook and YouTube. And once again, I do always repost. So I don't know why I'm plugged directly into the computer. Uh, so mine doesn't give out. But on your guys' end, I know there's been lots of issues. And who knows? Maybe I'm just at a time where a lot of people are streaming. But I do repost these. Don't have any trouble with the repost. So please check back if your feed cuts in and out. I definitely don't want you to miss this info. Um, but a lot of you have been pointing that out and just wanted to let you know. Um, so I try to put this everywhere so that you guys have more opportunities to view it in the event that your internet goes kaput. So anyway, I am Dr. Trisha Pingle. This is your morning checkup. It is Tuesday, June 30th. And today we're going to talk about some essential oils and some herbs that can help you relax. I think all of us could use a little bit of self-love and relaxation. Uh, so I have some great suggestions for you of how to do that. Some herbs to discuss with your doctor or consider drinking in tea form. Uh, so we're going to talk about those today. Kind of a quick little topic, uh, but a valuable one, I hope. Um, like right now, I this morning when I got up, I put a little bit of lavender oil under my chin and under my neck and I smell it right now and it's heavenly. Um, I also have a diffuser going with some essential oils and I commonly prescribe herbs in place of um, sedatives for people that have trouble sleeping. And so, um, and so do other countries, by the way. U.S. is more pharmacy based. Um, if you look in other countries, it's more herbal based. Um, so there's a lot of really cool things out there that maybe you haven't heard about and some plants that you haven't heard about. And we have haven't done a good herbal profile in a while, so I wanted to kind of give you some history on some of these herbs and have a little bit of fun today teaching you about new plants. So welcome everybody. Once again, for those that join, if your feed cuts out, I repost this, okay? So don't worry, just come right back to it. I'm on Instagram at, at Dr. Pingle. I'm on Facebook at, at Dr. Trisha Pingle. And if you type in Dr. Pingle or Dr. Trisha Pingle on YouTube, you will also find these usually within a day or two up on YouTube as well. So, um, my uh, website, drpingle.com, also links to all of these sites. So you can get the information. Uh, I guess we can't always control the World Wide Web up there and whether it stays solid or not. So, um, all right, so let's talk about, let's start with essential oils, what do you say? And then we'll move into some of the herbs that also help with relaxation and sleep. Um, and there are so many of them, um, but Let's start with essential oils. Now, I use essential oils regularly. Um, now, I'm not, you know, there's a lot of people who that's what they do, um, write the oils and herbs, please. I will, absolutely. I also uh, will link an article in the Facebook, but yes, I will indeed, and I'll spell them. <laughs> um, but I use essential oils quite a bit. Now, there's a lot of people that are trained exclusively in essential oils. I haven't done additional training, obviously through medical school and learning about plants and just general practice, I've learned a lot. There's a lot of you out there that probably even have more information about these uses as essential oils, but I'm focusing today more on the relaxation component, um, insomnia, just kind of chilling the body out, focusing on trying to um, just calm the body down. Because I think we all just sometimes need to just calm down and back up a little bit. Just, just a little. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in everything every single day and uh, we don't remember to take time for ourselves and really focus on parasympathetic activity in the body which is the calming aspect of our body so when we want to repair just a reminder if we want to repair our cells we want to detoxify our detoxify uh, toxins if we want to digest our food if we want to produce hormones effectively we need to be able to calm down if we're not calm we won't 
Okay, you don't get anything done when you're running from a bear, folks, right? So let's start. So as far as essential oils and using them, there are a wide variety of ways to use them. In this particular live, what I'm talking about is using them as a uh, inhalation type um, form. Um, so uh, diffuser, I have a bunch of diffusers um, around my house where you just add a little bit of water and a few drops of oil and you let them go. Okay, I also love to use essential oils essentially as a perfume. So you can dap it on your finger, put it behind your ears, on your wrists, sprinkle some on your pillow. A lot of people like to use a whole herb like lavender in a jar by their bed, you know, with holes in the top. Uh, people make herbal pillows for this purpose as well. So there's lots of different ways that you can utilize essential oils. These are how I'm talking. I am not talking about oral use on the essential oils. Got me? I'm not talking about taking them orally today. I'm talking about inhalation, okay? We're gonna talk about three today on the essential oil end, and we're gonna talk about three herbs, okay? The essential oils, one of my absolute favorites is bergamot. For people asking how to spell that, We've got B-E-R-G-A-M-O-T, bergamot. What I love about bergamot is that it combines with pretty much everything, okay? It just adds this amazing smell. Um, I love to put it in diffusers. Um, it permeates the air beautifully. Um, human and animal studies have shown that bergamot oil in aromatherapy causes relaxing effects within a very short period of time. If you go to a spa, I know here, a lot of the spas here in Arizona, when you walk in, you smell this wonderful scent. Almost always bergamot is involved in that. Um, if you're familiar with it, um, you may also recognize the smell from like Earl Grey tea, has a really strong smell of bergamot. Um, it has like a citrus-like scent that blends really well, okay? Um, yes, you got the spelling bergamot, you got it. So bergamot is a great one to add to your essential oil diffuser. Now I recommend blending it with other things. So here's a couple other options. Eucalyptus. I think most of us associate eucalyptus with opening up the lungs, opening up the nasal passages, which it absolutely does. But it also promotes relaxation. Let's think about this. If we talk about relaxation, I talk about breathing, right? Are you breathing? Right? So when you're breathing in eucalyptus into the lungs, opening up your lungs, you are breathing right? That innately causes some sort of relaxation. It also has a very familiar scent for people. And just like when you walk into grandma's house and smell the pies that she was baking, it just kind of calms you down. There's a familiarity to it. I think eucalyptus has that effect on a lot of us mentally as well. Um, so eucalyptus oil can include benefiting cough, cold relief, skin health, relieving pain, aiding dental health, but it can also support stress response, especially when blended with other essential oils. So I would add a couple drops of that to your diffuser. Eucalyptus oil is very strong. I often I put it in the shower as well. So I just put a few drops on the bottom of the shower when it's steaming. You can do that with bergamot as well. You can do that with lavender. Um, there's, you know, that, that steam just comes up and helps you relax. You know, showers are not just for cleaning us. They're also for taking time for ourselves. Um, really helps me unwind. I add eucalyptus to a lot of things. The third essential oil I want to talk about before I move into the herbs, which is really the nuts and bolts of today's live, um, is lavender. Uh, now, I did a live on lavender. It was maybe a month ago about the amazing research on lavender as an herb. Also, as an essential oil, has some amazing research. I mean, I'm talking helping people with Alzheimer's calm down so they can sleep. One of the hardest things with people with dementia is that they don't rest well because they get very confused and delirious. And lavender has some amazing impacts on that particular population when used on a pillow, like before they go to sleep, dropping some lavender oil on their pillow, putting lavender by their bed. Um, I absolutely love it to keep me calm throughout the day. It's what I'm wearing today. Um, not to mention I smell heavenly. Um, <laughs> um, but um, a few drops of lavender oil in your diffuser or in your bathtub, um, 
<clears throat> it's amazing in the bath. Even if you can get a whole lavender flower and sprinkle it in the bathtub, there is quite an amazing relaxating, relaxing component to that. Not to mention a bath in general is very relaxing. For those of you that just want something simple to do by yourself at home to relax, take some Epsom salts, maybe a cup or so, put them in a warm bath, and put a few drops of these calming essential oils in there, flower petals if you can, turn the lights off, put on some classical piano or jazz or something, and just chill. Just take 10 minutes for you, 20 if you can. Um, that is one of the best ways to just kind of calm the muscles, calm the body, the body down. The, ep the magnesium in the Epsom salts is fantastic. Uh, for your muscles, not to mention the smell and relaxation is fantastic for the mind. Combine those two together um, and you get a little bit of peace and quiet. I remember when my kids were little, um, I very rarely was able to do this because they would always end up in the bath with me. Um, I'd be like, okay, mommy's going to check out, you know, and I would close the, close the door and, you know, I think I would get about three or four minutes before I had little boys in my bathtub. But now that they're older, I'll tell you, it's quite nice. So if you have a spouse that can handle the kids just for 20 minutes or you can just take time after they go to bed to take a bath it's an amazing part of your routine definitely add lavender okay um in fact there was a lot of studies and this is all in um the live that i did on lavender some studies on using lavender to come off of benzodiazepines like xanax ativan and those types of things it's used quite a lot in that type of therapy because there isn't that withdrawal and coming off lavender. We're also going to talk about benzodiazepines and lowering withdrawal in just a second when we talk about valerian. So hang in there. Um, so I do also um, have, I make homemade lavender syrups um, to put in coffee. You ever had a lavender latte? Heaven. Heaven. Um, in fact, even sprinkling a little bit of the lavender flower on top of the latte just takes it to a whole nother level. But you can actually make homemade syrups. You can do that with all sorts of herbs, uh, lavender being one of them. A little bit of lavender and some coffee with some oat milk or, or almond milk or so is really freaking good, guys. So I have a very easy essential oil diffuser recipe for you. I do have it on my website under the um, article for relaxing herbs. So I would do two to three drops of each and I use lavender, bergamot, and eucalyptus. Put it all around the house and take deep breaths. Remember how to breathe, guys, in through the nose, out through the mouth, exhale as much as you can to the point where you almost immediately suck in more air because you've, ex you've exhaled so much, okay? I want you guys to all practice breathing today for one minute. I know that doesn't sound long. If you ever tried to breathe appropriately for one minute, you'll know what I mean. It's not easy. Right? We get so caught up in everything, we forget to breathe. I want you guys to do that today. Breathe. There is so much power in breath. Yes, in this particular recipe, lavender, bergamot, and eucalyptus. Now I will say, yeah, in the diffuser with a little bit of water. This water and add it to there. I also use a wide variety of other herbs in there too. Sometimes I blend in um, lemongrass, lemon balm. Um, sometimes I throw in citrus, um, like an orange or a lemon. Uh, that kind of adds a nice little kick to it. Um, there are so many awesome essential oils out there and it really comes to preference. But if you're trying to calm down, lavender and bergamot in particular should always be in that mix when you're just trying to chill out. Um, hi, <laughs> people saying hi. All right, so that's the essential oil portion of our live today. Now I wanna talk about some herbs and some herbs that I am very passionate about using that I have used for many, many years um, in practice. And these are not new, okay? These are herbs that we use, um, that many other countries use. Um, here in America, you know, we do have a huge a subset of doctors such as myself that utilize a lot of herbal medicine um, and it's fantastic however primarily in the US we're looking at pharmacy you know we're looking at drugs 
if you go to Europe and you look at different parts of Europe, that actually flip-flops. Uh, Germany tends to use a lot of herbs, a lot of nutrients, not as much pharmacy, or their pharmacy includes herbs. So, you know, their sleep aids and stuff actually already have valerian in them, where in ours they don't, you know, they're drug only. So um, it's kind of interesting to learn from other cultures and learn from other parts of the world on what they use for medicine. So I'm going to... Um, dive into three herbs that I use um, that I use uh, quite a bit um, and I have a comment about cats yeah um, essential oils toxic to cats definitely there are some essential oils in high concentration that can absolutely be toxic to cats so um, yeah you always want to check anything with pets I think using it in the shower you'd be pretty safe depending on the concentration at which you put eucalyptus in and how close the cat is to it does make a difference. You know, if your diffusers are where the cat doesn't go, you know, um, like on, I know that cats obviously go on shelves and cabinets and everything, but there are some areas of my house where it's farther up, where the cat's not walking directly into the stream, right? And if it's one drop, um, it, it doesn't have as much toxicity versus if they actually came into direct contact with that vapor. So thank you for that comment. Same goes for dogs, cats, birds. Birds are a big one. Birds have trouble with them as well. So thank you. That's a great comment. I really appreciate it. Um, the other question I have is, do I have preferences for essential oils? I just care that they're pure. You know, they shouldn't have a bunch of other junk in them. Um, they should be therapeutic grade oil. That's my main requirement. Um, and there's just such a, so many companies and such a wide variety, it's hard to recommend just one, but. Okay, so I wanna talk about herbs. Now, in this respect, I am talking about using these three herbs orally, whether it be in capsule, whether it be in tincture, whether it be in tea, okay? So we're gonna talk about those. Now, just a little disclaimer, guys. Before you take any herbs orally, you need to talk to your doctor. I'm giving you herbs that are fairly safe, generally well tolerated, However, there's always an exception to every single rule. So I never advise that you just jump in and uh, start things without consulting, okay? But I wanna talk about three herbs today that I have used in great success with calming the body, um, calming down from um, stress and adrenal uh, stimulation, and also to help you sleep. Because insomnia, as you guys know, is a really big problem here in America. So is anxiety. Okay, so the three herbs I'm going to talk about, two of them are like my absolute favorite. Uh, Passiflora, Shishandra, which we've done a full live on, so I'm not going to spend as much time on that today. And my, probably my absolute favorite, Valerian. Okay, so let's start with my absolute favorite, Valerian. So Valerian is a really cool, cool plant. It's actually polymorphous. So it changes. So it keeps kind of changing its genetics um, to give it even more specificity for certain things, which is really pretty cool. Um, it's a perennial herb. Um, it's um, temperate areas, uh, mostly Northeastern America, extensively cultivated in Holland, Belgium, France, Germany, Eastern Europe, Japan, and the United States. Um, it has a very distinct taste. If you haven't tried valerian, you're either gonna love it or hate it. I personally love it. I love the taste of it. A lot of people don't. It's a bark, right? It kind of has that barky, well, it's a root, but it has like a barky root taste. Um, ashwagandha, yes. I don't know if you saw my live on ashwagandha. Um, love ashwagandha. The only reason I didn't include it today is because I've done a pretty extensive live on it. And so I thought you guys could go back and reference that. But thank you for mentioning that one. Ashwagandha is another definitely up there. Um, all right. So uh, valerian has been around forever, guys. Um, Modern day uh, therapeutic uses in Germany, in, the, in Germany and the United States stem from traditional Greek medicine, okay? This was originally documented by Hippocrates. Pretty cool. That was in, let's see, 460 to 377 BCE. Um, and it was later put in the Materia Medica um, and used by Discardes and Galen for insomnia. So um, the current, so that this is this has been around a really really long time in Greek medicine. And I will tell you, of all the herbs out there, although ashwagandha is another one, there is so much clinical research on valerian. 
a ton. Double blind, placebo controlled studies. I mean, it has been well documented. If you go to PubMed and you type in valerian, you're gonna see a ton of well documented studies. And in fact, I haven't checked the update, but I know that there was a petition by Europe to add valerian to um for fda approval and there was problems with that and europe was like well i don't understand there's so much documentation and the u.s was saying well there's not quite enough documentation i don't know where it stands now i didn't have time to go look that up i know that was a few years back um but it's interesting because it has so much research on it um so it was um, well recognized for the sedative properties, although um, they don't know why. No one really knows why it works, but they document that it absolutely works and the side effects are ridiculously low. So it is official in the pharmacopias of Austria, France, Germany, Great Britain, Hungary, Russia, Switzerland. Um, in Japan and in India, they also have their own pharmaco pharma um, copia for valerian root um, in Ayurvedic medicine, Buddhist medicine. Um, it is typically done in a tea, a medicinal tincture, a capsule, pressed juice, drops, coated tablets. I personally prefer it in a tincture form. I think it works better. I think you get more bang for your buck. Um, you can find it in an alcohol-based tincture versus a non-alcohol-based tincture. Um, I prefer the non-alcohol-based tincture so I can just take a little dropper of it. It is in teas. I have made it into syrups. In medical school, I made a valerian syrup that was heavenly. Um, I basically boiled the root down, strained out the root, took the medicine out, and added it with like a cherry honey syrup. So like a 100% cherry juice with some honey. Um, boiled that down to make a really yummy cherry syrup. You can find it in those types of preparations as well. In Germany, they do use it in children in pediatric medicine. Once again, please talk to your doctor about that one. I'm not telling you to give it to your kids. Okay, talk to your doctor. I'm just saying in Germany, regularly used. Um, so they, um, it, it, it can become in really handy instead of using other types of sedatives. Now, I've talked a lot about the sedatives used in, in America for sleep and anxiety. It's pretty crazy, okay? Xanax, Ativan, Ambien, Lunesta, I mean, you name it, all of these herbs for, or all of these medicines for sleep, insomnia, to calm us down, and they all have pretty detrimental side effects, right? Definitely a withdrawal. I know that um, in watching people go off of these medications, the withdrawal is almost worse than the original problem. Valerian is one of those herbs that can solve that problem, okay? Um, so there was a study, you guys are gonna, not gonna believe this, it's pretty freaking cool. Um, there's been tons of studies on valerian, but one of them in particular um, was it was a randomized, double-blind, controlled clinical trial, okay? I'm not pulling this out of nowhere. This was funded, okay? And it was a parallel group design, and it looked at the efficacy and the tolerability of a combination of valerian with hop, with hops. Um, compared to benzodiazepines. Now, um, I don't remember which benzodiazepine they used. Um, I wanna say it was Xanax or something similar, um, but it was a GABA, GABA agonist, so part of that group. Um, and they were suffering from sleep disorders. And they found, and they found this in both groups. Both groups had better sleep quality. Both groups had better fitness and quality of life from using them. However, the ones on valerian, once they withdrew it after the two week period, the ones that had taken the valerian hops did not have any withdrawal symptoms. The ones on the benzodiazepines, significant withdrawal symptoms. Same efficacy, but when you had to go off of it, massive withdrawal in the medication group, okay? So um, they, really, they felt that hop valerian preparation in a correct appropriate dose was a very good alternative to using benzodiazepines for non-psychiatric sleep disorders and insomnia. Okay, so what that means, I have a lot of patients ask me, what does that mean? So there are some nights that you may sleep fine, you know, and so you just want to take it as is. Like, let's say when you travel, when I travel, I tend to bring Valerian with me um, because I don't sleep as well in a hotel. I can take it that night and the next day I won't have withdrawal, okay? That's important because if you keep using the benzodiazepines, your body becomes dependent on them and you have more and more withdrawal. You can't just as easily use those every so often. Um, so very, very important. There are numerous studies on that, um, multiple. 
Um, they've also found that valerian, and most of the studies show valerian combined with other herbs. Um, humulus, which is hops, um, was a big one. They've also combined it with St. John's wort, which is hypericum, um, as an alternative to um, Valium for anxiety. So Valium's another one that's highly used for anxiety. Um, combining Valerian and St. John Wort's has pretty good efficacy for that. Um, they've combined it with camphor, Sirius, and Hawthorne to treat functional cardiovascular disorders. Okay, cardiovascular disease, number one killer in the U.S. We can use herbs to combat that. Um, they have effect on sleep latency, sleep quality, um, and the effectives, effectiveness, tolerability, and side effects are all favorable, okay? So, um, pretty, pretty cool. Um, how do we take it? You know, I always recommend speaking with your doctor, but there's usually instructions on the label as well. I personally, this is a personal thought, okay? Um, just from my clinical experience, I find that the capsules do not work as well. Um, the dried herb does not work as well. Um, a lot of people do see benefit from the tea. Typically, the tea will have other stuff in it. So I think it's the synergistic effect that makes the tea work. I don't. I think if you just did a straight valerian tea, it might not be quite strong enough. But if it's combined with things like lemon balm, lavender, passiflora, you know, and it's one of those sleep tink, you know, chamomile, um, a lot of the times that will absolutely help. I prefer to take the tincture form where you just take a dropper of it before bed or whatever your doctor. Um, prescribes. Um, and I personally love to mix it with Passiflora, and that's what I'm going to talk about next, Passiflora. Have you guys heard of Valerian and Passiflora? Used it? Any success with it? Like I said, I definitely um, use it when I travel. Um, it helps a lot. So, Passiflora, I actually have Passiflora growing in my backyard right now. Um, Passion flower is, um, it likes tropical climates. That's where it likes to live. It also has a really strong history, just like Valerian, however, in a different way. Okay, now, um, for we, we asked to spell these, Passion flower, Passiflora. The other one was Valerian, V-A-L-E-R-I-A-N. Okay, so passion flora is a creeping vine. Um, for those of you in Arizona watching me, you can find it in Home Depot. Now, it may not be as quality of a medicinal herb. I don't suggest that you sit there and munch on it, but you can actually grow it. It might already be in your backyard. Um, it is a creeping vine. It's native to tropical and subtropical southern United States. Okay, um, Mexico, Central and South America as well. Um, and it was first cultivated by the Native Americans. So it has a little bit of an American history here. Um, it was cultivated for its edible fruit. And then Spanish conquerors first learned of passion flower from the Aztecs of Mexico, who used it as a sedative to treat insomnia and nervousness, okay? The plant was then taken back to Europe and was cultivated. Um, what's interesting is the Spanish missionaries uh, found this plant very interesting. It was named because when they looked at the whitish, the whitish violet flowers, um, it had references to Christ. So that's where they came with a passion. That's where passion flower came from. Um, but they said the threads were seen as a symbol for the crown of thorns, the curling tendrils for the cords of the whips, the five stamens for the wounds, the three stigmas for the nails of the cross, the ovary for the hammer, and the five petals and five sepals of the flower for the 10 true apostles. So it has a really interesting history, this flower. Um, but in traditional uses, um, it was used in American Aboriginal medicine by the Cherokees, the Humas, and the Aztecs, and it's very, very well documented. Um, it was introduced into um, conventional North American medicine in the mid-1800s, okay? Mostly for anxiety, to calm the body down, nervousness, shakiness. So when I learned about it in... Um, in medical school, uh, one of the main things that was cited for it was that it's one of those things where when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're anxious about something, you worry, you over worry, worrying about things all the time, forecasting events, those types of things, passion flora has great efficacy for. That's why I like to combine it with valerian. Why? Valerian helps fall asleep. It's a sedative, okay? So it's kind of like calm down. Calm down, Dr. Pingall. Go to sleep. 
And then combined with passion flower, that keeps us from waking up worrying about things. It takes that worry down so you're not dreaming about everything that you have to do tomorrow, which I know you all do, because I do, unless I take passion flora. So, um, but that's why they're a great combination, and that's why using it with other things like Shishandra, Lemon Balm, St. John's Wort can also have even more um, depth of use. The one thing that I always like a takeaway from herbal medicine when it comes to any herbal medicine and the reason why you should seek a doctor, a doctor who understands herbal medicine is that there are these clinical pictures that blend together really well and everyone is completely different. So, you know, some people aren't worrying about things. So Passiflora may do nothing, right? So you have to find that synergistic blend that fits the individual and the dose that fits the individual. And that's where herbal medicine can be so incredibly powerful. That's also where traditional pharmacy can also fail because it puts everybody in the same box. Herbal medicine does not, okay? It's adjustable. Uh, melatonin, you know, I could do a live on melatonin if you'd like. I think that would be a good one, um, especially some of the antiviral um, and immune boosting aspects to melatonin would be kind of cool, right? I'll put that one on the list, all right? Today, might take me too long to venture into that particular one. But um, so in Germany, as I spoke about earlier, Germany uses herbal medicine primarily. Um, and um, passion flora is used as a component um, combined with lemon balm and valerian root to help the heart. Um, and there have been very few pharmacological studies on passion flora, though the action on the central nervous system to calm people down. Um, um, it has been well documented and well documented through history. So bottom line is there are many options for you outside of benzodiazepines and medications for anxiety and sleep. Okay. So finding somebody who's trained in herbal medicine, understanding what to look for, or simply incorporating some more essential oils into your daily life can be very beneficial. I always, re I always recommend anytime you take an herb, use an essential oil, give yourself gratitude in that moment as well. It's almost like, like a lot of people, a lot of cultures will, um, when they eat an animal, you know, will thank the animal, be grateful for the animal, be great for the opportunity for the animal to nourish their body. I encourage you to do the same when it comes to natural therapies. It gives you a moment to just kind of recognize that you're doing something for yourself, um, which is a very powerful thing. Um, it also allows you just to step back for a second and focus on just that moment. So use the essential oils, breathe them in, full deep breath, right? If you choose to use an herb and you've discussed that with your doctor, be grateful for that. Be grateful for that opportunity to nourish your body. They're very nutritive. The third herb, by the way, that I wanted to mention that is mentioned in the article and I've done a full live on is Shishandra Berry. This one's a fun one. <laughs> S-C-H-I-S-A-N-D-R-A. -S it is a berry, it's an adaptogen. So what that means is it helps manage the way that the stress is interpreted, okay? So that's why it makes a really nice combination to valerian passiflora and often lavender in tinctures because the lavender has a very mood, bo bo uh, like a mood boosting effect, happy, smiley type effect. Valerian will put you to sleep. Passiflora will keep you from worrying up from worry. And Shashandra is nutritive to the adrenal glands so that you don't internalize the stress so much, okay? So once again, that's a great example of synergistic herbs, using things in combinations. Um, so if you don't have the knowledge on this, which most people don't, definitely seek someone out in your area that does. Um, and you'll find a lot of these herbs are used in um, combinations already at your health food store, and now you'll know why, right? Why is important, guys, why? Why do we combine herbs? We combine herbs so we can have a well-rounded, customized impact, okay? Um, as opposed to just taking a drug that gives you massive side effects and only addresses one aspect of the process, right? Mind, body, spirit, we're all connected, okay? Be grateful for your health, be grateful for what you have. I have someone asking about rhodiola. I think I did a live on rhodiola. If I didn't, it's in the mix. Promise, love rhodiola. There's so many herbs, aren't there? It's crazy. There's so many awesome herbs for your body that are well used in Europe. Not so much talked about here in America. Um, so anyway, it's Tuesday the 30th. Tomorrow's Wednesday. So I will be here as usual on time, ready to talk about something else. 
Um, if you'd like more information on any of this, please visit drpingle.com. I have articles going up a few times a week. Um, uh, once again, for those of you that missed in the beginning, I do repost these um, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So if it got cut out, you missed things, the replay is usually great, okay? Um, and if it's not, I'll post it from one of the other feeds, okay? So I want you guys to learn. I'm still taking topic suggestions. You have any suggestions? I love it. I heard rhodiola, I heard melatonin, um, and uh, still working on a couple others. Lots of new content coming out. I shot um, some information about my program, um, which Piggy so delightfully interrupted, um, <laughs> but it was quite cute. Um, and um, a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline. So please keep watching. Thank you for being here. I'm grateful for all of you. I hope you go out today and you have a fabulous rest of your day. I'm signing off. I'm Dr. Trisha Pingle with your morning checkup. Have a great day, guys. Bye.